Hello developers! Clover offers an expensive REST API that allows developers to create reincurring payments. The reincurring payments and subscription APIs give Clover merchants and developers the ability to set up reincurring charges on a periodical basis, such as monthly, weekly, or even daily. Customers can be charged on a finite basis, for an example, a payoff installment for six months, or an infinite, for an example, a streaming subscription. The subscription service will process each invoice at the configured date. This feature will be great when developing apps for gym memberships, Tea of the Month Club, yearly VIP status, book club, or dedicated service billing. The choice is yours. Before working with the APIs, it is important to have your OAuth token, a customer UUID, and encrypted car token linked to that customer on hand. Let's briefly go over the process to generate a card token. Clover offers two ways to generate a card token or a source token, iframe and API only. The iframe tokenizer is an embeddable customizable component you can add to your application. It allows users to securely provide card data to the Clover servers. Remember, Using iframe gives your app the benefit of reduced PCI compliant burden, as well as speeding up the integration and coding process by using a pre-built component. Further, Clover will keep the tokenizer up to date with any future API changes, so your app will require less maintenance. For an API only integration, you must use the PAKMS and token APIs in addition to the SCL API, which provides access to charges and customer data. These APIs provide operations for your app to retrieve an encryption key and use that key to encrypt and tokenize card data. Please be aware that the PCI compliance burden is higher in this process. There is a link in the video description of the full process with encrypting a card. Creating a plan is the first step in setting up your reincurring payments. Basically, this is where you define what the reincurring payment is for. The reincurring payment plan APIs allows developers to define a set of plans. Once the plans are set, the merchant can use these plans to initiate auto payments. You can specify the fixed amount, product frequency like monthly or daily, tax, and any fees. Using these APIs will require you to have merchant read and merchant write permissions. Let's create your first plan. We will send a post request to the reincurring plans endpoint with your OAuth token, and with this new API, the merchant UUID will be in the headers. The body will contain the information of the plan, for an example, name and price. Here is a demonstration of the endpoint. The plan interval can be a combination of things. Here's an example reference chart on how the interval and interval count can play together. For an example, if you want a bi-weekly reincurrent plan, you will specify the interval as week and the interval count as two. Please make sure to keep the merchant and customer aware of your reincurring payments. Transparency is key to understanding. More variations can be found on Clover Docs. Let's take a sneak peek of a merchant's dashboard. All plans will display in the reincurring payments app. Once you have plans created, you can retrieve the plans by calling a get request from the reincurring plans endpoint with your OAuth token and merchant UUID in the headers. Please note that you're only able to see the plans that you have created. Let's take a look at some demonstrations. This demonstration is showing the GET request to retrieve plans that you have created. All that is necessary is your OAuth and Merchant UUID in the headers. The JSON response will provide very detailed information about the plan, like the name, amount, 
if it's active, created time, and etc. Here is another demonstration, but of merchant created plans that will not be available in your get request. Remember, you are only able to see plans you have created. You are also able to filter which plans you want to search for through curry parameters. For an example, the plan interval or the plan status, active or non-active. Exploring more on the API, you can always edit and or delete the plans that you have created. Here's an example of a put request to edit the plan. Please be aware that the interval and interval count are non-editable. If you need a new interval or interval count, you will need to create a new plan. On the other hand, if you don't want to delete a plan, you can always deactivate it. This will be a put request as well, but setting the active status to false. This endpoint comes with some restrictions. You can only deactivate plans that you have created, and only if there are no active subscription associated with the plan. We'll be going into recurring payment subscriptions in the next section. Your plans are created, and a merchant wants to start adding customers to the plans to start their new billing system. This is where reincurring payment subscription APIs come into play. Merchants can use these APIs to create subscription for plans after they are created. Each subscription associates a customer to a plan to identify who should be billed for the subscription and with what payment that is the card on file, as well as the amount and dates on which a scheduled payment should be taken. The subscription then generates an invoice for each payment along with the receipt. Utilizing reoccurring payment subscription APIs will require customer read and customer write permissions. Some key things to remember is that when subscriptions are created, there will be five attempts to charge the customer. If all attempts fail, the subscription would automatically deactivate. Also, if the customer data is invalid, for an example, card on file, the subscription will automatically deactivate. Let's begin. Start by sending a post request to the reoccurring subscription endpoint with your plan ID as a path parameter. The customer UUID and collection method are the important required fields. The collection method will always be charged automatically. Therefore, it is important to make sure that there is a valid card on file for that customer. It is important to know that adding a price to the subscription will override the plan price for that customer. Not specifying the amount for the subscription will use the plan amount value. Creating a subscription will give you the opportunity to add soft descriptions, that is, Information about the business is shown in the customer's card statement. Make sure if the merchant is set up to have soft descriptions by calling the Ecom Payments Configurations endpoint. Here is a quick demonstration of the post request. The JSON response will return a confirmation of it being created with the corresponding plan ID, customer UUID, subscription ID, and other information. Like the recurring payment plans APIs, you can call a GET request to retrieve all the subscriptions you have created. Any merchant created subscription will not return in the JSON response. The JSON response will have very detailed information, for an example, the subscription ID, customer UUID, the plan information, the first time it started, and the last time an invoice was sent. Any subscription you have created can also be edited. Please note that if the customer payment method changes, you must revoke the existing card on file and add a new one. Customer payment methods can change for a variety of reasons, expired card, different card, etc. Once you update a subscription, any new invoices created after the change will be impacted. Below are the editable fields. You have two options on nullifying a subscription, cancel or delete. 
To cancel a subscription, send a put request to the reincurring subscription endpoint with the subscription ID and the path parameters and change the active field to false. You can also go back to re-enable it by changing active to true. If you want to completely remove the subscription, send a delete request to the reoccurring subscription endpoint with the subscription ID and the path parameter. Please be careful with deletes as you will not be able to reverse this. It is important to know the restrictions with using these APIs. These APIs are not compatible for any HIPAA merchants or merchants who do not have multi-pay tokens enabled on their account. That wraps everything up. Please take a look at our resources. We do have our Clover Docs, API references, and 24 seven community to answer any questions you may have. We look forward to seeing what you build.